In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to solve compound inequalities. Compound inequalities are simply when you have two or more inequalities that are attached or joined together. We attach and join them together with one of two words. The first word is or. Or represents a union where we take both inequalities and combine them together. And represents an intersection where we look at the inequalities and we find the values that they have in common. If we have a union, for example, x is less than negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to negative 4, we can graph that on the number line. All the shaded area, whether it's blue or red, represents the union of these two inequalities. Remember, a union is when you take the elements of both sets and combine them together. If we have an intersection, such as x is greater than negative 3, and x is less than or equal to 4, we're looking at both inequalities and finding the values that they have in common. To do that, we take a look at a number line. This represents the values x greater than negative 3. This one represents the values x less than or equal to 4. We look at the values that they have in common. In the boxed area, we see both inequalities share a certain part of the number line. That part of the number line is where our intersection or our solution set is going to be found. Remember, when we have an intersection, we can write it using a single statement. In this case, negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. Whenever you see anything written in this fashion, we know it's an intersection. In our first example, we have a union of two sets. The word or tells me that this is a union. We simply solve each of the inequalities independently and then we'll deal with the set after. We begin on the first inequality by subtracting 3, and that gives us y is less than or equal to negative 1. We then move on to the second inequality, where we first subtract 3, and then divide both sides by 2, giving us y is greater than 1. Because the word or represents a union, our solution set is y less than or equal to negative 1, as well as y is greater than 1. So we have all of the numbers less than or equal to negative 1 in addition to all of the numbers greater than 1. We can write that inequality as it is, or we can use set builder notation where we simply take the inequality and put it into the set builder package. We can graph this on a number line. The blue represents y is less than or equal to negative 1, and the red represents y is greater than 1. Finally, we can use interval notation. Notice we have two separate intervals. We have the blue one and we have the red one. The blue one goes from negative infinity up to 1. We have a union, and the red one starts at 1 and goes up to infinity. What does this mean? Well, pick any of the values in the shaded area on the number line. They can be fractions, decimals, square roots, numbers like pi, anything that's in there. If you plug it into the original inequalities, it will fall into the union, meaning it will either be in the first one or it will be in the second one. Example two is for you to try. The first thing I'd like for you to do is to solve each of these inequalities. Notice they're combined with the word or, which represents a union. Once you've solved the inequalities and you've written the inequality statement at the end for the solution set, come on back and take a look and see if your work is correct. Please pause the video here and let's see how you do. Let's take a look. On the first one, we have x is less than negative 3, union. On the second one, we have x is greater than 4 over 9. Once you have that, you can go ahead and write the set using the different notations. Please pause the video here, and then come on back. Let's see how you do. For the inequality, we have x less than negative 3, union, x greater than 4 ninths. We took that inequality, and we put it into the set builder package down below. 
the number line goes from negative infinity up to negative 3, and from 4 ninths up to positive infinity. The interval below shows us that same exact set using interval notation. In example 3, we see that we have two inequalities that are combined by the word and. And makes me think of an intersection. So just like before, I'll begin by solving each of the inequalities. I'll begin on the left side by subtracting 7w. And now I'll divide by negative 1. So I have w is greater than negative 4. Go to the second inequality. I'll subtract 2 from each side. And then I'll divide by negative 3. And I'm left with w is less than or equal to 1. Now, let's write this using our different notations. Remember, the inequalities are combined with the word and, which is an intersection. So our intersection is really the numbers that are both greater than negative 4 and less than or equal to 1. Here's our inequality. And for set builder, I just put it into the set builder package. I'm personally a fan of the number line because the number line lets me see what's going on. I have an open circle at negative 4, and I shade to the right. Then I have a closed circle at negative 1, and I shade to the left. The area that they have in common is what I see in purple. Finally, interval notation. I go from negative 4 up to 1. Example 3 also has something interesting to talk about because when we have an intersection, we can rewrite notation using a single sentence. We can put the w in the middle and say negative 4 is less than w, which is less than or equal to 1. Or w is between negative 4 and positive 1. I could also use that rewritten inequality in my set builder notation. Example 4 uses that same notation in order to give us a compound inequality. Here, they've given us an intersection. And really, this is no different than if we had something like 0 is less than x, which is less than 3. It's really the same idea. In red, it says x is between 0 and 3. In our example here, it says 2 times 6n minus 8 is between 0 and 8. The way to solve these is actually pretty simple. Break it into two separate pieces, and then solve each piece. Watch carefully to see how that's done. Notice in red, I have the first part of the inequality. 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 6n minus 8. Then I have an intersection. And the second inequality comes from the other side. 2 times 6n minus 8 is less than 8. Now I can solve each piece individually. Please go ahead, solve these inequalities, and then once you have the solutions, come on back and let's check your work. Once we've checked your work, then we can write the set using all four types of notation. Please pause the video here and solve the inequalities. Let's see how you did. In the first side, we have n is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. On the second, we have n is less than 2. Now we have an intersection. So now you can go ahead and fill out your set as an inequality, using set builder notation, using the number line, and then writing using interval notation. Please pause the video here. Try to write out those sets using the four different notations. And then come on back. We'll see how you do. With the inequality, we have n is greater than or equal to 4 thirds intersected with n is less than 2. Notice in red, we've written the same thing using the single sentence. Set builder, we simply put the inequality into the set builder package, and I could have done that with the black version or the red version. The number line shows us the points that are both between 4 thirds and 2. And notice we have a closed circle at 4 thirds because it was greater than or equal to, open circle at 2 because it's less than 2. Finally, interval notation, we go from 4 thirds up to 2, bracket on the 4 thirds, parentheses on the 2. 
Example five is our final example for today. This is just like you did just a couple of moments ago. I'd like for you to pause the video here to see if you can write the two separate inequalities. Once you've written the two separate inequalities, solve both sides of them. Don't write the sets yet. Just solve the inequalities, then come back and check your work. We'll see how you do. Here are our two inequalities. Negative 8 is less than 2 times 7 minus x, intersected with 2 times 7 minus x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, I can go ahead and solve each of those. I have x is less than 11, and x is greater than or equal to 8. Now, please pause the video here. See if you can write these sets using the different notations, then come on back and check your work. Written as an inequality, we have x is less than 11 intersected with x is greater than or equal to 8, or we could have written it as a single statement. We could take either of those and put them into the set builder package to give us our set builder notation. Because we have an intersection, we have the points from 8 up to 11, close circle at 8, open circle at 11, with the area in between shaded. Finally, we have our interval notation with a bracket on the 8 and a parenthesis on the 11. All of these different notations really mean the same thing. They're just different ways to visualize it. Some people really like the inequalities. Other folks really like the interval notation because it tells them where the set starts and where it ends. Other folks are more visual and they prefer the number line. What really matters, no matter how you write your answer, is that you really know the important parts of working with this. If you're dealing with the word or, you're talking about a union. If you have the word and, you're talking about an intersection. This is everything you need to know about solving compound inequalities.